Uh, you know, we're approaching kickoff. What, what, what's special about this time of the year as you kind of get ready to get back to work? Um, you know, the long hours. I think the, the hours get longer because it's not like we go to practice and leave. We go to practice, we got meetings, we got lunch together, we got more things to, you know, um, this is the most you're going to gel with your team, so, you know, that's special about it. Definitely. Um, as you kind of get ready uh, for the season, what what are the expectations of Colorado State, or what do you think you guys might improve on this year? Um, just being a better team, you know. Uh, we had a... This is second, this is year two, so hopefully by year two we get a lot of the things down packed. We probably won't, because that's the that's the name of the game. But you know, hopefully we get a lot of those um, those blemishes off our um, off our team. Absolutely. Well, something kind of cool. Colorado State has been updating their uh, their stadium. You know, making uh, the lighting thing it looks really cool. What's it like to play in that atmosphere? It's great. Um, it keeps it, it keeps it. It's not as dull, you know, when that fourth quarter happens, you know, the lights are on, you know, you get another surge of energy because you know it's fourth quarter. And it's now whoever we're playing, we got to go finish those guys. So I think it's, it's, it's kind of dope. Absolutely. Um, your wide receiver, I'm trying to, sorry, I have to memorize so many people. <laughs> Tory Horton? Yeah, that's who it is. Tell, tell me what makes him so effective what, and what's he like as a teammate? Um, He's special because he is dynamic, um, very, very dynamic. You know, who's to him? He is someone who does it on someone who does it on the practice, in practice, and it just translates to the game. You know, he does whatever he, whatever he wants to do on that football field. There's not a lot of people I've seen done that. Very cool. Um, oh, sorry, did I cut you off? Did you have? No, no, no. Go okay. Ahead. Awesome. Um, I want to go back to last year's season uh, at Boise State. What was your impression of the BSU defense, uh, offensive line going up against them? Um, they were all right. They were good. You know, um, they did a great job of containing me. Um, we really, yeah, that was a really, actually, that was a, actually, I'll say respectfully, that was a tough game for me um, because they, they knew what they wanted to do. They was running that stretch offense and stuff like that. Just wanted to run the sideline the sideline. Um, and we didn't do we didn't do well for that. We didn't prepare well for that. But um, this is year two, and hopefully, you know, we do a better job. Um, and a, a lot of those um, those younger guys step up, and um, you know, with our defensive line, we like to strike. Uh, hopefully, that a lot of those younger defensive linemen strike better and. We don't. They don't have a chance to run that stretch or get it out to the bubble or get it out to the sideline. What was it like to go up against uh, George Halani, a guy who's you know one of the best running backs at, when it, in terms of breaking tackles and finding ways to you know get himself out into space? What, what kind of challenge does he bring? Um, your technique has to be official every time. You know, um, he does a great job with. Um, Pushing, pushing his line from, for for example, like if it's a stretch play, he's going to play it until he finds that crease. He's going to push it as far as he can to make that cut, to make that jump cut outside. Um, he does a great job of that. Um, so you have to be um, verbally skilled and t uh, technical sound um, because if you're lacking at one point, you know, he's going to just hit it off. The, he's going to hit it off and go for it. You know, a touchdown. Um, very dynamic. Uh, respect that guy. Um, but hopefully this year we can shut that down. Absolutely. Um, BSU's ground game is, is, you know, challenging to a lot of teams because they have George Lani, they have Ashton Genty, who had a nice breakout year last season, and then quarterback Taylor Green uh, is a very true dual threat. When you go up against a team that has that much firepower, I mean, how do how do you prepare for that? You know, you bring your own firepower. Um, by fire with fire, um, you know, um, we have to put players in, we have to put players in situations in our D-line and our um, defensive coordinator does a great job of putting players in situations where we can fight fire with fire. Um, they're a great dynamic ground game because that offensive line, um, you know, takes it on their chest like men. Knowing that they only need to get, um, knowing that they're gonna, you know, hit every play, 
um, and they have to move the ball. So, you know, it's really not it's really not the dynamic players. It's really the offensive line. Um, they're the reason why the, the ground game is so good. Um, so respect to them. Um, and they do a great job because they're all technically sound. So the linebackers have to be technically sound. The safeties and everything, everything behind them. So um, you just have to fight fire and fire. Full team effort, though, is basically what you're yep. getting that. Absolutely. Um, so Colorado State, I, I believe in uh, the Mountain West history, has never beat Boise State yet. Yeah. How meaningful would it be to be part of the, the squad that could do it if you guys could do it this year, this season? Um, very meaningful. Um, it's weird to say that we've never beat them. Like I, I, I didn't notice until people bring it up, and it's you know, um, you know, that's a part of the game. Uh, that's a part of football. It really is. Um, of course, Coach Snowbell has been um, Boise State at other places and stuff like that. So, you know, um, he always rants about that. So it's like, um, we're supposed to be, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I don't know what it is. Maybe they got their number, maybe they had our number for the last 100 years or whatever. But, you know, hopefully we get to beat them this year and we're going to probably do that. So, you know, respect to you guys, but. We have things that we want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been talking to everybody about uh, NIL and just this new era of college football. What has it kind of meant to you or what kind of opportunities have you gotten? And just what's your overall opinion on how it's changing college football or if it's not changing college football? No, it definitely is changing college football. I mean, I'm lucky that this is my last year. Um, good and bad because, you know, um, because I do want to be a part of it, but I know it takes, I know at this day and age, it's taking a lot from the football aspect. But then again, it's, a lot of people are gaining from it. You know, a lot of people who need it are gaining from it. And I say this personally, if you're good, you should get paid. And that's in the NFL. If you're good, you're going to get paid. If you're good, you should go wherever you need to go to get paid. And that's just, and that's transfer portal. Like some people are getting paid out, out of out of the transfer portal to go somewhere. And if you're good enough, go ahead. You know, you deserve that money because you put in the time and effort. You know, I don't think any coach or any institution should blacklash, you know, these players for doing what they need to do. But however, I do think, and this may be controversial, I do think, institutions should um, better prepare um, college athletes um, to handle them um, in, all, in all ways, meaning um, show more spirit, understand that, you know, even if you might go, even if you might get that money, you might not play, ever play, you know, um, so is it, I don't think the institutions are explaining it, explaining to the kids, like, you know you're gonna get this money, but you know you're probably not gonna play. You're probably gonna be a bad player. Yeah, that school might have money to pay you, but they probably not play you. Um, and then there's some guys that you know go against all the odds and they transfer and they go somewhere big and they you know go to the NFL. So it's all different ways. But I think institutions should you know better prepare the kids to be ready to play in that atmosphere or be able to be okay with leaving and not playing or leaving and getting money or, or just, you know, all of that, all of that. I think institutions should do better. Yeah, just like uh, kind of making the expectations a little more clear. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they, I don't think they explain to them how the numbers of how many people are in the transfer portal or how many people are benefiting from the transfer portal because there's a lot of people in the transfer portal and of course you can leave. Um, and I think a lot of people, get, a lot of institutions get sour when players leave. So that's why they probably don't say anything. But I don't think they understand. I don't think they explain the benefits of the transfer portal. Um, and they don't also explain the, um, the drawbacks of the transfer portal. So. Okay. Um, also, so every road game I've been asking uh, the Boise fans, if they go to Fort Collins, what should they go do? What should they check out? Um, Crazy Carl's is nice. Um, that's a good piece of spot. Um, you know, 
It's usually cold, so I wouldn't say go to the mountains. But it's October. It's gonna be a beautiful time of year. Oh, it is. October, yeah. Okay, it's not too cold cool. yet. Yeah. Okay, okay. They can go to um, Horse Tooth. You know, they can go to Horse Tooth. It's beautiful. Um, go downtown. Hopefully, uh, downtown is lit up um, because we win. So we don't win in the other. I get to come. You know, we're not gonna start any fights. You know what I mean? Um, we're gonna have a good time. You know, think about me. You know, when it's war, is war. But when the game is over, hey, we're all good in the hood. So. Absolutely. Is there anything you want to ask? Uh, yeah, just like one question is kind of on the NIL. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, one question is kind of on the NIL. Like, obviously, you have like the Ivy downtown field making a lot, but then you just have those players where just kind of that extra cash kind of just helps out. Mm -hmm. um, how does that extra cash just kind of help student athletes? You no, know, most definitely it does. It helps a lot. You know, like I said, um, if you deserve it, you deserve it. And some people might backlash and make fun of, or even. Oh, this guy is getting this amount if he didn't play and stuff like that. And it's like, you don't know what that guy is going through, you know. Um, you know, I know some of my my teammates who are, you know, in that, have that opportunity to get an LAL. And some people are like, oh, they don't like it and stuff like that. But, like I said, if you're good enough, you should deserve it. Um, because you put in that time and effort. You, those people are looking to you to market them. If you're the face, then you're the face. But that's life. Nothing is fair. You know what I mean? That's in the real world too. Um, every business is like that. So why why aren't we? If this college football is a business, why aren't we claiming to be a business all the way? You know what I mean? Um, I think what it is is um, human nature. When people get mad at others others about how much they get and stuff like that, but it definitely helps. You know, it definitely, it really does. Um, maybe they should set up something where it trickles down to everybody on the team. That may help, but that person balling, everybody wants to be around him. He's the, and he's the face of quote unquote CSU, go ahead. You know what I mean? Then that means you have to play better and that's for all the, his other teammates, you have to play better. That's all you can say.